is the bean tree chip. You can probably yep. see it there, guy, yep. right? Yep. And I'll go into the sweep mode, and you see that the input beam is being swept in the field of view with yep. no moving parts. It's completely programmable. So I'm gonna go into this user mode. I can randomly point the beam anywhere I want. It responds in real time. I can do beam splitting. So if I use two fingers here now, I can split the incoming wow. beam into two. So that mirror is wow. now a beam splitter. One by three, one by N. Good morning, IPX. We are at a gloriously sunny day in Las Vegas. And as we always tell you, we go hunting disruptive technology uh, and we have found one. New motive, a new area in programmable optics. So you can't come to CES, not everybody can come to CES, but you can now meet a partner from New Motive who's going to tell you about how he's changing the world of programmable optics. Well, he's not changing the world of programmable optics, he's providing programmable optics. That's right, Guy. Thanks, so, thanks for coming to our suite. Yeah. Tell us what you're doing here. So, from the time of Newton, people have been trying to control light and they've been using bulky optics. You've seen lenses that you're wearing on your eye or on yep. your phone, yep. right, or on your cameras. You've seen mirrors. You've seen large telescopes. Yes. The problem with optics is that it's very difficult to do because of these bulky components. It's kind of like before uh, CMOS happened, the uh, transistors were in the flash tubes and all these mechanical systems, yep. and you saw the size of the computers, the size of the room. With CMOS, we could bring it into your pockets. Typical semiconductor Typical process. Typical semiconductor process. That's what we are yeah. doing with optics. We're taking those bulky components and bringing it into a semiconductor, and that will enable the optical technologies to go into your pocket. So this is what we are creating. We're creating flat, programmable optical semiconductors. Right. Right. And this will change the world in how you can control light and use light to deliver what electrons deliver today. Right. So you're going to go from electrons to photons, increasing your bandwidth and increasing, like pushing the technology to this new age yeah. of optical technology. So this is truly disruptive. It is. So, so, so if I'm in the community today mm -hmm. and I'm having to manage light today, mm -hmm. if that didn't exist, what would be the legacy system that I would be looking at? What would, in terms of move, or, of where, the, where I want the light to go, what would be the alternatives without that now? So that in, in, in contextually people understand exactly what it is. Absolutely, that's a great question. So people are using traditional mirrors they're making the mirrors smaller into MEMS mirrors. Yep. These are still moving components. <clears throat> yep. But they're mounting these mirrors or, or optical components on yes. motors. That's what kind of moves, yeah, moves and the then light they move around, them around. Move, the, move them around. So their traditional optics, what we call them traditional bulk optics, is the alternative today. Okay? And that's what people are using. And that's why optics has been difficult. That's why head-mounted displays have been difficult. That's why LiDAR has been difficult. That's where uh, the big bottleneck in scaling AI data centers comes in, right? And that's what we are trying to solve here. We're trying to make optics easy and we're trying to make it programmable so you can control it with software yeah. and you can keep it always aligned. Yeah. And it's easier to build it on a board, yeah. right? So, you don't so, have, so, mm. so without oversimplifying it, sure. but I'm going to. Mm. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. today, the wrong word, but essentially it's a mechanical process. That's right. Essentially, exactly. it's a mechanical process. Mm -hmm very complicated, mm -hmm. very complex mm -hmm. mechanical process, but that's what it is. That's right. And then you're saying, like the world of electronics, take away that mechanical element and use semiconductors to do that instead. Exactly, you got it, right. you got it. And okay. then when you go to semiconductors, you get the additional advantage that you go from analog technology to digital. Yes. And now you can control this by software. But so now so the same completely piece changes completely everything. changes everything. Right. So, so now you bring the optics to the software programmers. Right. Right. Excellent. So mm -hmm. let's just, before we see the demo, let's just, just, mm -hmm. just, just get our, get, not our heads, because you mm -hmm. understand it. Obviously we remember mm -hmm. that I don't understand everything. <laughs> uh, when, when you say, so, so, so where, where would, if, 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 if today you've been working in a mechanical world, you won't have a software, or we probably will have a software element to how that machine interacts. But is that software element different in that environment, or are you looking at a different kind of interaction with the software? Very different kind of interaction. Very different. So a okay. lot of like, right. the, yeah, low level is this, you know, you do the same software, but now you can think of it as we are making optics for AI because it's programmable, and now you can kind of your system can respond to what it sees or what it what's happening in the in the world around it. So we are actually making these optics for AI. So now you can run AI algorithms, you can make smarter sensors or smarter systems that self-correct, self-align, kind of change uh, uh, depending on the, on the environment. And we'll show you some of that. 
this is uh, so like you're groundbreaking, able, groundbreaking you, because stuff. Because you, you're able to bring in a level of machine learning exactly. and AI exactly. to understand how the system, where it's getting its best feedback, when to move, how to move. Absolutely. Predict and when to move. Absolutely. And we can do this in very low latency in real time. So it's a programmable right. system. It's, it's kind of a living, breathing element, right? And, and this is foundationally different and groundbreaking. Right, show us the demo. Yeah. All right. So what we got here is our Metasurface LCM product, which is the flat programmable optic. That's our first product. It's in the market. And what this does, it does the function of a mirror. It, it directs light from, you know, uh, to any direction that you want. Now, traditionally, you'll have to do it with a moving mirror, and you have to move the mirror around to send the light in, in yep. different ways. Yep. But here, we can do it with no moving parts. We're showing That's the so demo. Cool. Nothing, is, nothing is moving. Nothing here. is moving. So I don't know if, if your audience can see it on the, on the video, so I'm going to just hold yep. it up here. Hold it up. Yep. Yeah, pull it up here. And what you have is the, is the beam tree chip. You can probably yep. see it there, guy, yep. right? Yeah. And I'll go into the sweep mode, and you see that the input beam is being swept in the field of view with yep. no moving parts. And it's completely programmable. So I'm going to go into this user mode, and I can randomly point the beam anywhere I want. It responds in real time. And you know what's cooler here? Like, it's, it's, it's you know, this is where you know, it, it really breaks the, the norm, is it's programmable. I can do beam splitting. So if I use two fingers here now, I can split the incoming wow. beam into two. So that mirror is wow. now a beam splitter. And you and just couldn't do that. it's completely programmable. That, that would be impossible. It's impossible to do. That would be impossible do. in a mechanical environment. Exactly, exactly. Because this is a programmable optic. Yeah. So I can change the optic from being a mirror to a beam splitter, one by two beam splitter, one by three, one by N. It's completely programmable in real time. And I can do many different things. I can do different ROIs. I can scan different parts of the field at different rates. Yep. So this capability never existed. No. Never existed. And we are bringing this in a commercially available semiconductor, which is done for the first time. Right. So this is a foundation technology. Lumotive holds over 120 patents on it. And we're doing it in a highly efficient way to bring this capability into the next generation of optical systems. Right. That's right? simply so this is really for the optical designers. When you're thinking yep. about building your next optical system, yep. think about designing it with the programmable optic. Yep. Then so where, optics. where 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 do you see the absolute sweet? When you know, we're in the mechanical world, mm -hmm. there's lots of them. It's there everywhere. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the, the the most likelihood for adoption with this in the next eighteen months? Where where where, mm -hmm. where do you say if we talk to somebody who's got a mechanical optical system yep. and we bring them and we show them that demo and we give them that dev board, which we're going to talk about in a minute, mm -hmm. where would you see the absolute sweet spot for that? That's a great question. So anywhere where you're moving a beam of light, if you're working in an application where you're sweeping a beam of, of yeah. infrared light, yeah. this is where you got to think about using the LCM technology. The biggest industry today where this has been a big pain point and a lot of companies are shutting down because of that is the LiDAR world. Right. So LiDAR has been super difficult because of the capability to sweep the scene or scan yeah. the beam of light. Lasers have existed for a long time. Receivers are very mature. Is the beam steering that's, that's the mm. pain point. And that's what we're solving. So we're taking that technology as a first application and enabling our customers to build LiDAR systems. So you've seen LiDAR systems on the Wavo cars or others, and yeah. these are like big yep. bulky systems on the yep. roof. Yep. We take that, we make it this small. So with our technology, LiDAR becomes this small because you don't need the motors. Yep. And we have a so you can basically put that anywhere. You can put that anywhere. It yep. becomes ubiquitous. Yeah, so it's point. very difficult to not think of, when I ask you where would you think the sweet spot yes. is, when it's that big, yes. uh, that could go into any industrial application. Any industrial application, that automotive go, application. Automotive, yeah. Exactly. Agricultural yes. sensing, any, or, or anything and That's everything. Right where you're looking to look, look, exactly. use a beam of light to get and, and it doesn't make any sound because there's no motor, so it, yeah. it doesn't annoy you if oh, it's well, inside well, the cabin. it's not going to break. It's not going to break. It's going to be reliable. Yeah. And you can keep, it, it will respond to the environment. So you can program it, you can push software updates to it to do different modes, right? You can keep it aligned on, you know, calibrated with software. It, it's phenomenal. It's groundbreaking. So this is where, to answer your question, in the next 18 months, we see a big adoption in the LiDAR world right. because we will finally enable LiDAR to be real and be able to scale. That's been the problem, right? Yeah. So that's where we are focusing on and enabling our customers in the world of LiDAR. There are other applications, of course, it's a foundational technology, can go in any optical system. So we'll talk about some other applications, but we think that it's going to be that's, really changing that's the, the LiDAR. Background, that's the background, that's the context. Exactly. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, groundbreaking, actually, totally disruptive, a new era, they've got it on their poster. 
programmable optics, which is absolutely groundbreaking and you can look to evaluate it. Let's just answer that question now quickly. That's the evaluation kit there. That's the evaluation kit for a core technology. Uh, this is something that's available. You can talk to us and get it. Uh, if you want to just evaluate how the programmable optics work and how you could use it in your own applications, right? So this is the way, place to start. If you're looking to evaluate LiDAR systems based on our technology, we do make some reference designs. We're not a LiDAR company. We are a semiconductor, optical semiconductor company. Yep. But we do make some reference designs to get uh, our customers a head start. Yep. So we have some reference design and dev kits for LiDAR that right. people can try as well. Right. Is, now, that, is, that, is, is, is that something you can get? Exactly, that's something that, you can that buy. That's that something get. we have running and, and right. so, that's so right. you can go and you can go and get that unit. Exactly. Right. Good. Yeah. That's an amazing introduction. Thank Great. you. Thank you.